Hello everybody and welcome back once again. It's good to see all your lovely smiling faces today. Um, now, talking of smiley happy faces, um, my good friend Glasgow Lee called me a couple of weeks ago to ask which monitor I use for photo editing right now. Um, his name's not really Glasgow Lee by the way, it's Lee Glasgow. Bit sad, but it's a bit of an in-joke that we share on the Fujicast podcast every now and again. You have subscribed to the Fujicast, right? Um, anyway, that got me thinking as he's uh, really not the first one to ask this question. So I thought, why not let's do a little video about the monitor that I use for my photography business. Um, might be interesting to you, perhaps. Now, the more observational of you will notice that I have two monitors behind me. And uh, the big fella to the left, that's that one there. Um, is the huge BenQ SW320 and the svelte little chap here to his right is the SW270C. Uh, funky names, huh? Now, uh, the big one, the one at the back, is no longer available it seems. I just looked this morning in fact, um, but I'm mostly going to be talking about the 27C, this one here, 270C, because uh, that's my primary monitor for photo editing. The big beast is the one that I use for 4K video editing, but not for photo editing. Uh, that, my friends, is left up to this little smaller 27 inch panel, um, although 27 inches is uh, plenty. Now, I have to say I've been using BenQ monitors for a while now and uh, I've never used an ISO or an ESO or however you pronounce it these days, so I can't make a comparison. I'm not here to say this is better than an ISO, um, but what I can tell you is that the BenQs are brilliant for what I need them to do. Um, probably a couple of grand less than an ISO too, I'm guessing. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with a long list of techie stuff about the monitor because quite frankly, there are plenty videos out there that do that and I may well fall into a narcoleptic state if I do. Needless to say though, the key things that were important to me perhaps when selecting my monitor are possibly important to you too. So essentially what we've got with the SW270C, I'm going to just call it the 27 from now on, is a 27 inch uh, 16x9 2560 1440 IPS panel. The IPS is important because it means the color and the light are displayed the same no matter the viewing angle. This should be really helpful when I have a bride or a groom that come into the studio, decide to bring their mum, their dad, the chief bridesmaid, dog, Aunt Sally, Uncle Jim, uh, bring them all to a meeting in my studio. I want them all to be able to see the screen from any angle that they sit and, and, and that's what the IPS technology will allow you to do. Even though I have the 32 inch unit for video editing, I think that's probably overkill for stills photography. Um, I find my head moving around way too much, it gives me bit of a neck ache uh, for general work. But video editing is very good because I've got a much more um, area of real estate to work with. Uh, however, for stills editing, 27 inches is perfect. Now the bezel on this ca on this camera, the bezel on this monitor is extremely narrow. So although you'll need to check if your desk can fit the screen, the size edge to edge is not much larger than the 27 inch itself. Uh, according to BenQ, the monitor is pretty standard, 99% ARGB, 100% sRGB coverage. And most of my work is done digitally. I'm not shooting for commercial clients that require ARGB output. I typically shoot everything and edit everything for sRGB. All you need to know about the 100% coverage is that all bases are covered, I guess, um, though you will need to calibrate or you should want to calibrate, I should say, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. You know, when you see a, um, a shampoo advert on the telly and it says something like, uh, you know, new technology like contains oxy shiny cordial elements from pigments of orange and mango. Uh, <laughs> well, when I was researching monitors, I thought it was pretty much the same. I've seen it on so many of them. And BenQ have this thing called Advanced Uniformity Performance. Um, and I just thought, yeah, whatever. Um, Pretty much I decided to ignore it, in fact, and, and you know, I was looking at a video, a review of the, of the monitor on the internet, and actually it's pretty cool. It, it insists, it ensures that there is a uniformity of the color, the contrast, the depth, right across the monitor. And there's a big difference between the SW32 and this 27 inch panel. It's something I can really notice. So actually it's not just techno jargon. Both of these screens, by the way, come with the big black hoods, you know, those wings that you can see sometimes on, on people's screens. Looks very, very, very important. Um, I used to use mine, but actually I found it uh, a bit repressive, I have to say. Instead, uh, now I just edit in a light controlled environment. And by that, I mean, I keep my blinds closed when I'm editing. Uh, I don't tend to use those hoods. As good as they are, um, I found them a little bit overkill for me. Uh, the screen is USB-C, which might not seem that important at first glance, 
but it is. Um, it's 60 megahertz uh, connection or 60 hertz. Uh, this means that you can plug your laptop in or tablet and power it at the same time. Uh, there's also two USB-A ports and an SD card reader on the back of the monitor. Um, of course, now I don't need to use those as my laptop has USB and SD card readers and all that. But those without, I'm thinking of you Apple MacBook Pro users, um, you may find that incredibly useful. Plug the monitor into the uh, laptop, power it up, use it. You've got USB ports, you've got all kinds of stuff going on there. SD card readers, everything. Now, if you're serious about your monitor for your stills editing, you absolutely want to have a monitor you can calibrate, absolutely. Now, almost all monitors of any brand will allow some kind of calibration, of course they will, but I really want one with a hardware calibration. Uh, it just takes the pressure off the system and allows it a little bit more easier to calibrate the screens. Uh, for the calibration, I currently use the X-Rite iDisplay Pro tool. Um, I'll link to that, of course, below. I'll link to everything. Um, of course I will, right? It's, uh, it's nearly Christmas and uh, the making money on YouTube video guides say, do tech stuff just before Christmas. So uh, here they are, everything's linked below. Um, click away. Now, <laughs> in all seriousness, it is important to calibrate. And in my mind, the iDisplay Pro is, is the reason to upgrade to the iDisplay. Um, it's probably the best one that I've used so far. Um, maybe I'll do another video on full calibration at some point. Um, but the thing to remember is that the, both the iDisplay Pro and the monitor using USB-C means it's a one cable calibration, which is really nice. Um, now, I typically use the software that comes with the, uh, the X-Rite tool, the iDisplay, and it's called iProfiler rather than the BenQ software, but they pretty much do the same thing. Uh, you go through the simple steps and it will create a color profile that will accurately match the colors for your screen. And uh, what I love about the iDisplay range is the, is the colorometer, uh, colorometer, another cool word there. Uh, it just sits in front of your screen and monitor and it monitors the ambient light, I should say, and uh, just adjusts things accordingly. Okay, a few quick tips on color calibration. Let's bring out Lenny the lecturer. <laughs> I've given him a name. Um, number one, you do not need to edit in complete darkness for best results. Number two, do try to edit in, in a similar lighting environment each time. Number three, recalibrate around twice a month. Number four, try to wear relatively dark clothing when editing. Number five, have a hardware calibrated monitor. Number six, your monitor should be the brightest thing that you can see ahead of you. Uh, so switch off all those fancy LED strip lights and all that other stuff. Just have your monitor in front of you for the brightness. Now, once the calibration is complete, you'll be able to see what the screen was like before and after. And that's usually when I go, oh, wow, <laughs> that was bad. Um, now, I mentioned the USB-C thing already, which is cool, as when I'm doing my video editing on my big old monitor, I can just plug in my uh, laptop or my tablet. I can watch Netflix or, you know, Returns of Wales, not winning the Rugby World Cup again. Um, but, you know, it makes it very, very clean system. And I dream of a cableless society, you know, or at least a totally standard one. Surely, surely the time will come when we just have one type of cable for power and connectivity. Uh, imagine how much resources it would save for the planet. Um, here's hoping we'll get that someday. Anyway, on to the final part of the puzzle that drew me to the BenQ range of monitors uh, and the 270C specifically, and that's the PUC. I said PUC, P-U-C, <laughs> cool word, PUC. Um, with my first BenQ monitor a few years ago, the puck generally sat under the monitor and got dusty, it didn't really use it. Um, but the one on the 27 is, is really very nifty actually for a couple of reasons. Uh, for example, it allows me to very easily navigate the cumbersome menus that all monitors seem to have. No more pressing right up four times to the left and then pressing X by mistake and having to start again. Uh, just use this nifty little device, like a joystick really, it's pretty cool. Um, but really the puck is way more than that. It allows you to skip easily between color profiles. sRGB, ARGB for example, I believe also the monitor has an MBook color profile, which uh, I think matches with the Retina displays on MacBooks. You might want to just double check that. Um, for me though, I love the monochrome switch. So. This has helped me immensely, and I've only really seen this kind of implementation on the BenQ monitors to date. May well be available on others, but this is the only one I've really used. Uh, by pressing this button on the puck, <laughs> I can switch the whole screen to monochrome. Now, of course, that doesn't mean your work is suddenly edited for you. Of course it doesn't. But what it does mean is that you can get a very quick idea about whether an image will look good in monochrome or not. 
For example, I can whip through in Photo Mechanic or Lightroom or even Capture One. Uh, <laughs> Capture One, all the cool kids are using Capture One these days. Um, and easily eyeball images that have a uh, definite highlight shadow contrast. Very quickly I can mark those images so I can get ahead of the game upon import and automatically apply my base level monochromatic presets to images that I know structurally will look good in black and white. I think that's such a neat feature and for wedding photographers or family photographers or any photographers really that have uh, have to go through a lot of images, you will absolutely love this little puck. <laughs> puck. All right, so uh, there you have it. Uh, that's the reason I use the SW270C and for my photo editing, um, your mileage may vary of course, and this is just what I'm using. Uh, you can make your own choices up. Um, I'll do my best to answer any questions you leave below, as long as they are nice. And for those of you wondering how I'm getting on with the X-Pro3, by the way, still loving it. Of course, I'm loving it. I'm going to say that also. Um, great camera. I'm actually using it full time now at weddings. So I've got another wedding on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to stretching its legs once again. Um, now, next week, I'm going to talk about what I have in my everyday camera bag. I'm trying to get the videos back to once a week. You now things have calmed down a little bit. Um, so make sure you tune in, uh, my friends. Have a great day, weekend. Evening, morning, whatever it is, wherever you are at the time. Happy snapping and I shall see you next time.